right guys, so full disclaimer, uh, this video is a little bit long. It's kind of the, uh, a lot happened in the last three weeks. Uh, just too much to really dive into, but the, the skinny of it is that I lost the last two weeks because I actually had surgery, like emergency surgery, I guess. I, I went in because I had abdominal pain. Next thing you know, they're like, we gotta get you to surgery. Your gallbladder is pretty bad. So I went from zero to 100 really fast, and then the week prior was hot, and I've been doing stuff around the house. So obviously, initially, I probably mentioned that I thought um, I could probably have the Buick done by the end of June, but I lost a lot of time between working on my boss's Chevelle, his Bel Air, uh, and it was hot, and uh, I lost my window of opportunity. June was a great month, just uh, weather-wise and, and just not time-wise, but... Uh, just watch the video, skim through it. There's a lot of randomness uh, related to it, the, what I'm doing, what I was doing this week. So I'll keep this short. Just wanted to kind of make that disclaimer there because um, it's the first time I've been out here in three weeks. So what's going on, guys? Uh, not much has been happening with the Buick in the last three weeks. Actually, with a lot of anything. Um, we did our one... Bracket race, so uh, forgot what weekend in June that was. Um, and then uh, just been busy with stuff around the house. I finished up the last round of stuff around the house I needed to do. Um, and then, you know, I planned on getting a lot of work to this car done on Labor Day weekend since it was a three day weekend, but the prior Wednesday, um, I had surgery, so apparently my gallbladder decided to quit, and it was bad, and I had to go have it removed, like, last minute, you know, these things sometimes get planned out, not in my case, I ended up in the ER, and they removed it that day, so uh, I've been down probably coming up on two weeks now, um, and I plan on going back to work on Monday, I am absolutely bored, I haven't been able to do anything but it doesn't take much effort to do what I'm going to start on tonight. Um, I'm going to get the fenders ready for feather fill. And then, so I'm doing this in two sessions because I'm working with two different products and I have to mask off certain things differently because of it. So the fenders are going to get it masked. I'm going to prep them out tonight, mask them off, leave them ready for tomorrow morning. And first thing is I'm going to do feather fill on this and then uh, I have to do some running around tomorrow and while this dries which should take like two hours to dry up approximately I'm going to take all of my masking paper off and then I'm going to spot prime the hood because the hood is actually in really good shape the only area that needed work was where I caused it and then uh, I'm going to prime the entire roof with our high build primer I'm not going to use feather fill on that and I'm going to just bring the primer down into this uh, like little valley. And the main reason for that is, and then I'm going to just throw a little primer over these bare spots because it's been sitting for a little bit. And I just, you know, it hasn't rusted up or anything yet, but just a little bit. But either way, I'm going to bring my primer down to here. And the deck lid's going to get primed up. And then, you know, obviously the other sail panel is also going to get primed up. Um... And then, uh, obviously, our A pillars, the roof, the rear sail panel. We're going to prime this up. Um, you know, and it's not going to be like little spots. I'm going to evenly prime everything, and it's just going to kind of fade into the area where it's not needed at the moment, uh, just for the main purpose of putting top coating it and keeping it nice. And then after, uh, once uh, I get the doors done, uh, I have my patches all cleaned up and ready to go for that. Once that's all, actually, I think I have them in here. I'll show you guys. But once I'm done with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and get the doors totally done. And I'm going to go ahead and proceed with painting the door edges and the door jams. I'm going to have to remove that trim and seal and stuff. And then once that's done, it's onto the quarter panels. And then that can get all done. Uh, I also, the, the trunk is also going to get primed at this time as well, all evenly, as that's done as well. So, uh, that's what I plan on doing tomorrow, and we'll see, because 
I have been pretty much down for almost two weeks and I really haven't done a whole lot of I've done a lot of minor stuff around the house just to keep me kind of busy but I haven't done any actual like work work I do have a lift restriction for weight uh, but uh, the heaviest thing I'm going to be picking up for this is probably the roll of masking paper and that's not very heavy so um, that's what I'm going to be doing today I figured I would uh, fill you guys in I really haven't done much there really hasn't been much effort on much of anything to be honest with you but uh, I don't mean any disrespect by that I just haven't been really motivated to do any of this stuff I really haven't wanted to anyway but there is stuff on the horizon there's obviously I still got half a season a race season to go and um, everything else is in pretty good ship shape so I won't keep you I'm gonna get to work and then I'll make a video as I go on how to mask things up so I'll let you guys go all right now back to a little our second part of the video I guess uh, drinking Clydesdale piss today uh, so um, I got like half the car masked off and I wanted to just point out a couple of things so I do the race car pattern whatever you want to call it so I back tape all the edges and then I run tape inside out so that the sticky side is facing me down 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 sometimes across depending but not necessary for this application uh, if you were painting a car you would probably want it tighter but since we're priming I'm not worried about it um, so uh, I didn't go crazy with masking it because we are just priming and ultimately the car is not painted but the critical areas are obviously our window opening don't want any overspray inside the car even though there's no interior in it we still have the glass in place so I went ahead and masked off the glass uh, I masked off the fender you know back taped it got plastic obviously I'm not going crazy but I want to keep the primer where I want it I don't want it to go where I don't want it if that makes sense the neater you do this and when you do work like this where it's in bite chunks it's nicer when you can individualize the panels when you prime it and they're just nice and clean because you know you don't you're not gonna have primer overspray on the hood or on the door even though they're in primer themselves and they still need work it's just neater it's a little bit extra work but you know what it's better all around now you may be asking yourself why don't I prime it all at once well I still need to patch up the doors I still need to patch up the quarters so the goal here is I'm going to put the fenders in feather fill which is a polyester based primer so it's like almost like a skim coat of putty and I'm going to talk to you guys about a little technical work on this fender so uh, obviously I'm going to open up the trunk back tape it put paper there um, and then I have to tape off the back window as well still but I wanted to kind of show you guys how I did it so that way at least you guys can see uh, but yeah so the goal is that tomorrow morning I'm gonna come out here I'm gonna put polyester primer on the fenders I'm gonna let them dry for you know a period of time maybe this stuff dries pretty fast it's catalyzed so it's it's like a polyester filler it, it'll dry fairly fairly fast so you have to move fast with that material if you use anything like um, Feather fill where it's it's catalyzed with an MEKP hardener, which is the clear stuff you get with like fiberglass resin. Again, polyester resin, fiberglass resin, same stuff. Um, it dries really fast. So by the time this corner is dry, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to lightly lay a piece of paper across here. And then our roof, our sail panel, and our deck lid are going to get just regular high build primer because those panels are really good. This had a lot of work compared to this. And um, for this area, I'm not too worried about it. It's not a super flat area. It's round. The, 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 if you look at the profile of the roof, it's not truly, truly flat. And it didn't really need a lot of work for me to say, hey, let's put a super high build primer a thick primer like a skim coat of spot putty over everything like feather fill so I'm gonna save the feather fill for like the fenders the doors and the main quarter panels that's all I'm gonna use it for I'm not gonna worry about it on the roof I'm not gonna worry about it on the deck lid I'm not gonna worry about it on the hood the hood is also gonna need primer here which I may do later if I can't mask it quite off because my gaps are tight so I don't know how I'm gonna be able to squeeze masking tape in there but uh, I did 180 all the panels so I d8 sanded it with 180 um, some guys might want to use finer like 220 240 I like doing 180 uh, the scratches are fine enough to where they don't shrink and you see it 
least in my experience. Take that with a grain of salt. Um, and then, um, so yeah, now let's get to the bread and butter of this technical talk. So you guys can see this like line here, right? It's a little hazy and there's still paint here. Well, this, this fender has a groove here because this body line, it goes like contour this way. So it's convex, concave, and then again, it goes kind of outward again. So you end up with like a butt cheek here. Now this butt cheek is profound from like here to here. And this is what happens sometimes when you walk away from work. Now I started worrying because I'm feeling the body work and I'm going across and I'm like, it feels like a high spot when I get to here. But that whole uh, concave area becomes flat at the back. So this is where um, if the average guy did the body work, a lot of people probably would have just skimmed over this and flattened it out. But this is how it's supposed to be. You know, these panels weren't truly flat. And again, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to feather fill it and block it. And then once it's blocked, I'm going to spray it down with pre-cleaner and see what the reflection looks like. I'm going to let that, that dictate that because sometimes you can get carried away and these fenders have so many little things going on that you miss that they're truly not flat. Like I said, it's convex here, concaved here, and then it kicks out again here. So you end up with a, like a crease here, a natural crease, but it also fades away because at the front of the fender, it flattens out completely. So you're going to have... Uh, you know, a discrepancy from this depression to the flat part. And, um, you know, it's something that, again, that's, that's just how it was. So I'm not going to really worry about it. But for the guys doing it at home, uh, sometimes look at the other side. And on the other side, we didn't have body filler work there. And that's why, you know, you can always reference one side or the other. So on this side, you're not going to be able to tell as much. But you can definitely see the crown of that, you know, this where I broke through, that's a crown. And that's where this part is round. And then this would be the low spot and then it kicks out again. And then if I felt it across the back here, I felt that little spot that I was feeling on the other side. So I did a good job there, I think. I'm not gonna speak too soon. I may need to swipe that panel to smooth it out a little bit more depending on what the reflection looks like. But um, that's where sometimes you can get a little carried away. And sometimes when it's good enough, go ahead and prime it and block it and let the primer or the polyester primer tell you what your next move is going to be. Because once you have a new fresh substrate in that reflection, you're going to be able to see what it's going to look like almost in paint. So that's where when you spray your pre-cleaner, it's going to be wet. It's going to act like clear coat and it's going to give you a nice little reflection. And you can stand, you know, you're going to stand back and you're going to look down the side and if you see any major, major ripples, then yeah, you're going to have something. But these fenders are going to have little lights like, you know, dips and stuff. And we're not building a show car here. We're trying to just, um, you know, like restoration is back to OE. And some cars, a lot of cars are actually over restored in, in some respect, which isn't bad. But it's hard to replicate what the factory does. And when you ultimately do body work like this... Um, on, on some cars, they would just skim coat the whole fender, block it all out, and now you got one big pretty substrate. Well, I'm not trying to do all that. I'm trying to do, you know, recreate what was there in a sense. Um, not that skimming the whole panel is wrong. It's just, it's not what I was opting to do. So either way, another little thing too is I got a lot of little shiny spots, like here. Ah, don't be afraid. Just, you know, with a red scotch bright pad in the morning, I have to run out and get one. Um, I'm going to hit all those little areas up because you don't want to put primer over shiny, just like paint. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and scuff that stuff all down. And I'm not worried about dust in the primer. If this was paint, yeah, no, you want to take care of all that stuff absolutely before you mask the car off. Because any, any of that little grit from the uh, scuff pad that will land on the tape, it will fly off. But since this is... This is the initial round. This is the real initial round of primer, not the epoxy primer. This is the real first initial round of primer that I'm going to be doing. So it's not going to be as critical because most of it's going to get blocked on anyway. So I'm not going to worry about it. But if this was the final, uh, you know, well, in this situation, we're probably going to end up sealing it because uh, we might use a darker sealer for the color that, that's a very transparent color. Uh, and I've been using like light gray primers, but either way. Um, so 
uh, either way, if, if you were to be doing this and going from like primer to sealer, that's a big no-no. You don't do that. And in, in primer, yeah, but no. If you're going to go to paint, you know, you, you wouldn't hit these areas up after you mask it off because you don't want any stuff that could land on the paper or the tape to fly back on your, on your overall finish. So I was just going to share that with you guys because, you know, if you run into that situation, that's uh, it's kind of how you approach that. So see you. All right. So it's Sunday. It's like 3.15. I woke up like really early today, like before seven, I got to, I actually went to the local Menards because I just needed a gallon, gallon of lacquer thinner, scotch bright pad. I know they had that. And I also need a char charcoal for today's cooking project. <clears throat> so usually on Sundays, we kind of make something special out of dinner. It usually involves me smoking something or something in the smoker or something that takes a lot of fucking time. Either way, uh, as you can see, our deck lid is primed. It looks good. Our roof is primed. Uh, obviously, the sail panel is part of it. You can see where I masked it off because I didn't need to prime the whole quarter. I just needed to prime the roof and the sail panel, and I just hit the area that I had already fixed, which turned out to be good. Uh, I did forget to prime the hood because I covered it, and in the grand scheme of things, I forgot. I put feather fill on the fenders. Uh, the driver's side fender is going to need more love, and when I do that, I will explain in detail. You can still kind of see it in the reflection. If you follow this line right there, it dips up. What that means, there's a low spot there. Right across the whole thing from that arcway, right there, all the way up. It was a flat spot. I probably made it flat blocking it. So what that tells me is that I'm going to need... Uh, I'm going to need a skim coat of filler. I'm going to need to shape it out a little bit. But this is why I don't like to get totally carried away. Because sometimes you spend a lot of time on stuff and you get so carried away. And the feather fill uh, is somewhat sacrificial. It's there for heavy fill. Obviously, as soon as I saw the reflection, uh, I knew that it was going to need attention. But for as much work as I did on this, I almost knew that it wasn't. I wasn't going to get away with just blocking it and being good. No. No, not the case. But the other fender is good. Other fender is pretty much going to be blocked. It's going to need regular primer like this, our regular urethane high build, and it's going to be done. Obviously, our sail, sail panel came out really good, uh, nice and smooth. Uh, I primed up the little bit of bare metal spots I had just to protect them until I, had to get, until I could get to them. Obviously, our pillars are all done. So it looks pretty good. Made big... I would call this at this point big progress, even though it was just, you know, something to keep me busy and kind of getting ready to go back to work after being down for almost two weeks. Um, and I did take the olds out today to go get gas. She's running good. I had a sound off with the neighbor over 4th of July weekend, kept revving his German car. And quite frankly, I took offense to that. So I had to show him how to America. And uh, I'll put a video clip of that on here. So either way, uh, just... Stick around. You know, there'll be videos like this. It's been like three weeks since I did anything. So uh, if you guys are following, great. Share, like, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram as Copper Cutlass. We'll see you around.